Vamos iniciar. Now we begin. Bom dia, queridos. Good morning. Dear friends, good morning, dear listeners and participants. Welcome to this online seminar, which we call Democracy and Autonomy. This is a event organized by the um, Threefolding Journey on the Social Organism. This is a group that is part of the social sciences section of the Anthroposophy Society in Brazil, along with our friend and dear professor, Dr. Wilson Nobley. The sponsors of this seminar are the Institute Paripasso, the social sciences section in Brazil, the in Switzerland, the Ethical uh, Banca Etica in uh, Latin America, the Fundación Dinero y Conciencia, and the World Brazilian Society of Anthroposophy. We have the honor to welcome at this seminar, Democracy and Autonomy, which is extended throughout five days from Monday to Friday, uh, for, uh, always at 11 a.m. Brazil time. So the contributors and speakers, Gerald Hefner, today on Monday, tomorrow on Tuesday, we'll have Cicero Blaine. Then um, on Wednesday, we'll have Jean Melot, also Shara in on Thursday, and Finally, on Friday, we plan to end the seminar with a special closing panel uh, with the presence of the speakers and contributors, a debate that will be conducted by Janimi Saponara and Vilso Nobre. So this is a seminar that's uh, scheduled with the virtual and um, meetings with Gerald Hafner here in Brazil ever since 2018. The intention of the uh, threefolding journey group connected to the social sciences section in Brazil is to encourage the awakening of new awareness for the social interactions among humans and motivate research in the spiritual spheres the law and rights and economic life. So now, uh, as we open up this session and the seminar, we have a contribution from Gerald Hefner, which we call Democracy and Autonomy. Gerald Hefner is he, um, from 1978 to 84. He studied literature, social sciences, education and philosophy as one of the co-founders of the green party in germany gerald hefner had three mandates as a member of kudunstag the german parliament additionally gerald was a euro parliament member between 2009 and 2014 from 2002 to 2005, he was a member of the board of the Anthroposophy Society in Germany. And ever since 2015, he has been occupying the position as the leader of the social sciences section in Switzerland. Gerald Hefner 
is the co-founder of some associations, among which we include Ami Democracy, More Democracy, and Democracy International. From now on, I have the great honor to welcome to this virtual stage in this seminar on democracy and autonomy, the leader of the together with uh, the journey of the threefolding process here in Brazil, our friend Gerald Hefner. Welcome. Gerald, the floor is all yours for this virtual participation. You may begin. Thank you, Michael, and a very warm welcome to all the friends in Brazil, in Latin America, and to all those who listen. And I hope you can hear me well. The technique is not the best. I'm in Stuttgart in Germany. But let's start uh, because you are here to listen and we are then here together to meet and exchange and talk. So I will talk about democracy. Why? Why is democracy so important? What does it exactly mean? And is the way we practice democracy, is this already the best possible? Or how can we develop democracy into a better form? That's what I will talk about today. And I will talk about this on the background of our world's situation. So the world is on fire, merely. So in many countries during this summer, there were huge fires. There were huge parts burned in Europe, in America, in Asia. At the same time, we had terrible floods. And we realized that the climate became unstable. This is the consequence of what we done and what we do to the earth, to the nature, to the climate, to the environment. And it cannot be solved by just me or you changing your personal habits, your personal way of living. It has very much to do with a new form of responsibility, a new form of responsibility that we did not have in the past. In the past, we were under the rule of a governor, a king, a pharaoh, a tsar. So the people, simple, ordinary people like me and you, we had to follow the rules that were given by others. But today we live in a century, we live in a phase in history where we cannot longer blame someone high above, where it's not about the leader telling us what to do. Today, we are all responsible. And this means a completely new form of responsibility. How can we take responsibility together? It's even hard to take responsibility for my own life, but how can I do that for society, for the whole? This is the threshold we are facing now, we as humans on this planet. The question is, will we be capable of developing our responsibility into a responsibility for the whole, where we are not responsible as single persons only, but where we are responsible as citizens, as fellow citizens in a city, in a country, in a continent, on this world. And this is the core question of democracy. The core question of democracy has to do with the fact that we need rules. When we live together, we need rules. Otherwise, it's impossible to live together. And this will more and more be the case, the more we become individual. In the past, men were parts of groups, 
And in these groups, they had more or less the same belief, the same way of living, the same living standards and so on. And they followed the rules, the traditions. Today, this has all broken up. It has changed. And we live in a world where what I do here has consequences for you in Brazil. And what you do in Brazil has consequences for Hawaii or Taiwan. So we are not separated in groups anymore. We are one mankind. And at the same time, we are individual human beings. So how can we link this together? How can we as individual human beings develop our responsibility for the whole? Let me come back to what I said on the rules. So if we want to live together, it's necessary that we agree on specific things like to say something very simple, which way of the road should we use for this way and for that way? It makes sense to have a rule. If we don't have a rule, then it will always be dangerous, terrible. We will have accidents all over. So we need to have rules. And this is not only the case in traffic, it is the case in economy, it's the case when you deal with money, this is all based on rules, all laws, all constitutions are rules, based on rules. And the big question is, where do these rules come from? In the past, this was absolutely simple and clear, they came from above. They came from the king, the Tsar, the emperor, they came from the dictator, there was one person, or later then, there was a small group of people above that made the rules, and the others, they just had to obey the rules that were given to them. But then the idea of democracy arose. And why did this arise? Why was this the case? It was the case because we, as humans, we understood that no human being can be under the rule of someone else can be just the object of the decisions of another person. We are all equal. We are all on the same highest level. So we should respect each other as equals. And when we are all equal, this means that we should all be parts of the decisions that are taken. We should be asked, we should have a say on the rules. So they should not come from above and we should be just the the objects of decisions. No, they should be discussed amongst people. And this is the very idea of democracy, not just that we are all equal uh, towards the law or in front of the law. It also means that we as equal human beings, we together, we create the laws. And this becomes more and more important every day because I'm absolutely convinced if we do not solve this problem, then there will be no future for mankind. Because the big questions of our cultural life and our freedom and of our responsibility for nature, for the animals, the plants, for the planet, the earth, this needs to have an intermediate space, a field where we all meet and where we all agree where we can agree of how do we want to treat the water? How do we want to treat the soil, the air? How do we want to treat this planet? Do we want to go on with plastic in the oceans? Do we want to go on with carbon dioxide in the atmosphere? Or if we want to change that, can we have new rules? Can we have new rules that, for example, do not allow in the future to feed animals with, um, uh, I don't find the, the term in English, with uh, toxic substances uh, in order to avoid them getting ill? Uh, or do we want to stop pesticides, herbicides being brought into the water with the consequence that it's cheap for the farmer, but it's extremely expensive for the whole of mankind in the end to extract this toxic stuff out of the groundwater again. So can we come to agreements on that? And the question is, how do we do that? 
And in the past, I already said this, in the past, it was like this. There was the king, the emperor, and he didn't ask. He just was the king, so he didn't have to ask. What he said was the rule for the others. This changed now, and now we have democracy. And democracy means the power lies with the people. But how we do, do we do that? Mostly, we do that by electing our fellow politicians, our parties, our parliamentarians, members of parliament, or our governors, our chancellors, our prime ministers, and so on. So again, we have a group of people on top. But the difference now is that we can elect, we can, we have a choice, we can choose them. But then when we have done that for four or five years, we have to stay back or lean back and just watch and listen what they do. And very often we are frustrated, we are angry. We say, how could you take this decision? But we can't do anything because we can't intervene. We are mere spectators. So we have no say in reality. The only say that we have is every fourth or fifth year, we can say, okay, I want to have this party or this politician. But then when they are elected, they will do different things than what they said before. So we need to have a say also after the elections and between the elections. And this means citizens need to have the right to make proposals, proposals, law proposals, bills, a proposal to solve a problem. And the next thing should be citizens should be allowed to present these proposals to politicians. And if politicians take up the proposals, very well. If politicians don't take up the proposals, if they say, no, sorry, we, we don't agree, then the citizens should still have a right, a possibility, either to learn and say, okay, we understood your argument and we'll go back and make a better proposal or to say, no, sorry, we can't agree your decision. We have the impression that this decision was not correct, was not deeply thought, deeply enough thought upon. We want to ask our fellow citizens and then the citizens should be allowed to start a referendum. So to ask the other citizens, would you agree on that or not? And once you have this, which I would call direct democracy, then you have the possibility for every citizen to come up with proposals and to discuss these proposals with other fellow citizens, and then to start a new law to be citizen lawmakers and to change things in the country, in the society, to change the rules. So we started that in Germany 40 years ago. I started an organization which was called Mehr Demokratie. We invented a form to do that. We made a law proposal that allowed citizens to do that. And from that day until today, we had more than 8,000 such initiatives by citizens and more than 3,500 decisions being taken by citizens. So citizens use that right. And the interesting thing is it changes their attitude towards the society and the state and it also changes their attitude to the other citizens and it completely changes campaigns because in elections in election campaigns it's mostly on are you for or against bolsonaro or lula or dilma rousseff or whoever are you for or against merkel and this is a very strange question because this is this does not allow you to give any answer on the future of the education system in your country, on the future of economy, on the future of environment policy. It doesn't allow you to say anything on that. It just allows you to say, okay, I'm for this or for that person or party or group. So this is a very weak and very old fashioned way of allowing people to engage and to have a say in democracy. And uh, more and more, people have the feeling it doesn't really change enough. So we need more than that. 
And what we need is we need open discussions, discussions on the issue where it's not about this or that person, where it's not about this or that party, where it's about arguments. How do we want to solve this and that problem? And therefore, people do not gather around a flag and a group soul, a party group. They gather around an insight, an idea, a, uh, an issue, and they make proposals. And other citizens can make better proposals and come up with their proposals. So the society would then start to discuss the issues and not the question, do I like this or that person? And to philosophically, I would say, we start to come from the uh, sentiment soul and the group soul to real thinking and to consciousness soul, to debates where it's about solving problems and about the future and where I see a colleague, someone I can cooperate with in every person and not only in those persons who belong to my group. So this would be an important step to change and to, to change democracy and to bring it to a next stage. We did that in Germany in many aspects and it is so overwhelming to see what citizens can do. I already told uh, one day the example when we had this big waste incinerator in the town Kempten, where I lived close to, close to the Alps in the south of Germany, and where we had five times as much cancer, so a five times higher cancer rate in the circle of 25 kilometers around this waste incinerator, just because it uh, would uh, emit so many uh, dioxins and other toxic stuff. And we had a strong citizen uh, campaign against the waste incinerator. But then we, so the organization that I started, Mehr Demokratie, we introduced direct democracy uh, for this uh, situation, for this country, and people would have the right to start a referendum. So what people did was we met and we thought about what can we do against the waste incinerator. The first idea was just let's make a law that does not allow waste incinerators anymore. But then the question was, will this convince people? Or will people ask, so what then? If we don't have waste incinerators, what shall we do with the waste? So what we did is we invited the best experts, the most brilliant people, interesting people, mostly not the advanced, uh, let's say, professors of some university, mostly strange guys with strange ideas. We invited all those who had new ideas on how to deal with waste. And we made a new law where the first idea was how can we avoid waste from the beginning? Secondly, if we need let's say packing material, how can we produce it and use it in a way that can be recollected and reused? And then what we cannot recollect and reuse, how can we recycle that? And how can we separate the different forms of waste so that we have organic waste like compost and we have paper and we have glass and so I don't need to tell you, you all know this now. But at that time, nobody knew about this idea. People would find it extremely strange. And we, the Green Party, we introduced that law into our parliament and all other parties said no to it. So it was 7% for the law, the Greens, and it was 93% against all the others. So it was clear a no. But then we asked the citizens and we made a three years campaign. We discussed it in every town, in every place in Germany. And in the end, the citizens voted for our proposal with a huge majority. And politicians were really wondering. They would never believe, have believed that because they thought, how can citizen, citizens vote for a law that so much changes their habits, their attitudes, their way of living? And I'm sure if this law would have just come from above by the government and parliament, it would not have had the same impact. It had a huge impact. It changed the attitude of people towards 
based because it came from below, from the basis, from the society, from the people. And we discussed it all over for three years. So people were convinced. And then they said, okay, let's do it. So we could introduce that by a referendum, by direct democracy. And since then we have it and we exported it all over. We have it now in many, many countries of the world. And very often new ideas do not come from those who are in charge, who are responsible in government, in parties and so on. They come from outside. They come from new groups, from interesting thinkers that are not in the system, that are partly outside or trying to build bridges. We need to integrate these new ideas into our society, into politics. Within the citizens, there's so much more ideas and so much more knowledge than within this tiny cast of politicians and parties. So much ideas that are not brought up and that we don't use yet. We have to uh, use these ideas to, to bring them to the notice of everybody in order to be able for the big transformation that our society needs. Only if we improve democracy in this sense, it will emerge and we will be able to together solve the problems on this planet that we have. Let me just in the end, very briefly say that I say this knowing that democracy is under hard pressure and that we have a loss of democracy in many, many countries like Myanmar or Russia, Turkey, the Philippines, in many, many countries around the world, democracy comes under pressure and we have more and more totalitarian regimes anymore. And this has a lot to do with the media of today, with social media, with these bubbles where you just meet those who think like you and the internet that always brings up only what is extremely, let's say, extremist, loud, emotional, strong, and where a differentiated thought has no chance to at least appear on the screen because the algorithms would always bring other more sensational, more, uh, more things that appeal to your emotions. So it, it gets more and more difficult and politics more and more becomes kind of a, huh, how can I say, uh, more and more like spectacular, spectacular thing where you don't talk about differentiated proposals and ideas, but more about do I like this or that person and it's huge campaigns and it's people who tell you, okay, trust me and I'll solve all the problems. The only chance that we have against that, and I think the last elections in Germany showed this, is to really address the issues and not follow that bandwagon of uh, being more, uh, let's say, extremist, loud, simple, aggressive, and so on. Because people more and more get sick of this aggressive way of seeing the other as, as an enemy. And, what people are longing for is that we learn again to address the issues, to see the possibility, the chance in the other person uh, to cooperate, to meet, and to understand each other and to, to solve our problems together. And this was a very brief introduction into now the exchange that we will have in the dialogue uh, meetings. And it was like the first step on that what the friends and colleagues will continue and in the end we will look on it in a panel amongst all of us. So I'm very much looking forward to your dis discussions now and thank you for listening. Thank you very much Hafner. It's a great pleasure to be with you once again. It's a pleasure to be with all of our friends and this great audience here today that arrived to listen and participate in a democratic way uh, for this conversation. Thank you so much on this introduction. We agreed that Hafner would have a uh, initial stimulus for this dialogue. 
and then I will invite all of you to go into a separate uh, breakout room so that we can really apply and experience democracy. So as Hefner mentioned, citizens have a lot more ideas than just the, the little small group of politicians. And these are the ideas from modern days that we're gonna be sharing. So I'm going to share my screen here. And just so we can conduct this in a little more organized manner because I need to instruct you on this and uh, ask you to participate, right? So basically the idea is that we're heading to a conversation moment, a dialogue moment, and each person's opinion is very important. So we don't have the king and uh, the people that follow the king. Now we are all at the same level and everyone's uh, valid. So please adopt a appreciative and respectful posture and really appreciate people's opinions. And I would like to remind you that we are recording this session today. We're gonna leave from this uh, natural debate environment. And normally when you have a debate, you have a struggle or a fight, you have to have a winner and a loser. And this kind of conversation on a public space and rules and laws in Brazil and all over the world has been a debate of that's death oriented. People are distancing themselves and uh, because of these debates. And now I want to invite you to move on to a dialogue where you have an exchange of meanings. It's a reflexive investigation. So I would like to invite all of you to have a dialogue, active listening, empathy, and opening to new ideas that come from other citizens that are sitting with me in this uh, meeting room. So now I'd like to call your attention to one thing that's very important when we work, we, we learn about when we work with these techniques for these social technologies, and especially with the word cafe, uh, the main maximum phrase is that the room is more intelligent than the person that's most intelligent in the room. So there is more intelligence in the collective construction. And then finally, I want to share with you a, a guiding question. So this is the question that will lead us to dialogue. So based on the speaker's presentation, what questions should we ask uh, to be able to build a broader and more democratic dialogue across society as a whole? In this proposal and this invitation uh, to establish dialogue. Uh, so please share uh, this, talk about this first person and um, assess their curiosity. So I am um, placing here and I will request support from the technical team, the code of a sharing space, which we call Mentimeter. So whoever would like to write in um, their contributions and collaborations can just go on to the browser, select menti.com, and you'll enter this little screen here with an, a browser, and you can place this code, 23940053. Or you can select this now in this QR code, or you can select the link that will be placed in the chat that will um, go directly into Mentimeter. So upon providing these, these instructions, I will invite you to all uh, go into some breakout rooms. There are very few people and together you can share this idea. So time is very limited, um, eight minutes only. So we have scarce time and this is also part of the current moment in humanity. So dialogue, respect, appreciation for others' opinions and we have very little time. So after this, you can go into Mentimeter or here on the chat and you can place your questions. And then after I'll pass the word back on to Rafner so that he can um, make some comments on the questions you've presented. So Felipe, uh, you can send people to the breakout room for now. You um, don't have to do anything, just join the room. Hello, Victor Morgenstein. Hello, Morgenstein. Hello. Hello, Paul. I'm 
In fact, I am Brazilian. I'm talking from Sao Paulo, Brazil. And you, from where you are, are you talking? From the Gutianum. Ah, Gutianum. I'm the co-worker of Gerald Hefner. Oh, that's wonderful. I, I suppose that it's really a pleasure to work with, with a man with this past, with this experience, with this... Uh, well, experience, yes. Exactly, I that, yeah. yeah. I can, I, there's really a lot to learn from him, especially on the political level. Yeah, um, yeah, sure. Um, okay. Yeah. And, and we have a lady here, Larissa. 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 Bella. From where yes. are you? Yes, good morning. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. From where you were talking? I'm from Brazil. Brazil. I chose English. And I'll try to follow you. <laughs> I'll try. Okay. Well, I'm it's not from so Brazil easy, too. but uh... <laughs> nice, nice, nice that you also join us. Yeah, we were just uh, introducing ourselves a little bit. Um, I, I work for Gerald Hefner here in the Gutiano. Uh, I'm the co-worker in the section for social science. And maybe Victor and La Larissa, you can also quickly say what's your background. Well, okay. Uh, yeah. uh, well, uh, I'm a consultant, organizational consultant, but I have a, a quite good background from anthroposophy. Uh, my, my son, my daughter studying at Waldorf School, and I'm, I'm not an anthroposophical consultant because I'm not selling anthroposophy for organizations, but many of my values we're constructed, we're building on the anthroposophy. So oh. very quickly is that. Thank and I, I'm, I'm, I'm joined uh, Anthroposophical Society, Brazilian Anthroposophical Society. Oh. Okay, Larissa, straight ahead. Vai em frente. I am a lot of things, but uh, mainly I'm a, an agriculture. I live in a farm for 16 years now. And I'm a therapist. My passion is are the plants. Wow. And so I work with aromatherapy and phytotherapy. And, but what I like most is to plant uh, the herbs. And I participate in a group uh, that, um, a group of a uh, Waldorf school here in São João del Rey. Uh, how to say the group that manage it's a the uh, association the group of the association of the school so it's it has been an experience uh, of uh, experiencing the democracy of controlling everything so many things to discuss to do especially in this moment it, it has been a great experience for me to join this group it's really dem a democratic group and it's, it's ha it has been changing for me and sorry for my mistakes in english I, i'm trying to practice <laughs> okay. um, and do you do you agree with gerald's statement his general statement that by participation we already become so much more dem democratic than than maybe before, because I think that that is one of his main statements that by involving the citizens in the decision making on a more regular level than every four or five years on, on smaller uh, intermediate decisions that like, have you have you seen any fruits of that? Yes, can I say? Yes. <laughs> Yes, I think that uh, uh, being with the group and discussing the, the many, the, the main questions and, and, and difficulties, we have to exercise the listening, the thinking uh, profoundly about the other ideas and being open because it's so, it's, it's a huge responsibility because our decisions are affecting so many children, so many families, especially now in the pandemic time. So we have to look inside and, do, and try to be your best in each word, each sentence, each, uh, each opinion. And yes, I, I discovered 
my difficulties, what I have to, to uh, how to get better. For today, for, for example, we have a meeting and I'm preparing myself for it, preparing myself spiritually, emotionally to be present with my best. This is one of the things I think it's, it has been happening with me. Oh, thank you. Because every bar in the meeting, it's like that. Everybody has this, this feeling of being the best. So one provokes the other to be like that. Mm -hmm. I never experienced anything like this in other meetings, in other groups. Uh, well, uh, taking uh, the idea of referendum as a main force to change in the political sphere, uh, I think that this is a wonderful idea. The, the, what I see that could be the problem is that to have such a transformation, this should be in the constitution of the country. So even if I, I took Larissa here in Brazil and more friends and so on, and we can say, I would like to make a referendum. Okay, we can even do it. The referendum can happen, but the, the idea or the conclusion of the issue that we are discussing in this referendum should not, will not have the, the strong, the force, the a force, né, Larissa, that could change the law. Let's take the example that Hafner did give us. We would like to have, a, in Brazil, you drove, you drive in the right hand of the street. But suppose that we could have a city that people would drive in the left hand. How you make it one, one and simple idea because this will cost money to change the placards the 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 os cartazes larissa me ajuda aí well the 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 things the that are, the signals brigado the signals the the in the street and so on who who have to change the majority, the mi minority, why? Who would pay this difference in the cars the, that have to change the drive of the, the side from left to right, so you see? So uh, the question that arose me is, how you take this wonderful idea of referendum to put it with strong, with really possibility to change in the constitution of a country. Mm -hmm. the, the example you gave, I think, is, um, is, is, is a nice example, but it's lacking the, nece the necessity for it. If you, if you really burn for something, I, ca I can't imagine you would burn for suddenly start on the drive on the left side of the road. And I think that would be like a minor change on a social level. But if you have something you really burn for and you gather, uh, you can gather more people around you for the same cause, for something that's really valuable for, for the progress of society, then I think things are possible. Of course, it's not, it's not easy. And until a change in constitution comes, it takes, it takes a while. But um, uh, yeah, uh, with, with many more people together, um, yeah, bundling forces, we can, we can go further. Mm -hmm. What I think is the most important is to, to try to begin with the most urgent things that uh, urge and like you said, uh, many people want it for a, a, a reason that it's, it's obvious, like um, um, Decisions that affect nature, for example, that a whole huge thing for us today. But the money, we have much money in the wrong hands, uh, going to the wrong 
space, the wrong decisions, the wrong projects. And I don't think we, we have a lack of money. We have a lack of priorities or, or wrong priorities. And to change priorities, uh, these are difficult things, but possible things. But I think more in this direction, to, to use the same money for other decisions, other projects, other priorities. Uh, because we, we know that many people are winning lots of money and, um, without necessity. <laughs> yeah, we are seeing in Brazil, many people getting rich with our money, with the money of taking care of nature, with the money of taking care of children. So we have just a lack of values, huge problems of values and priorities. In this direction, I think it's possible to begin a movement. It's not impossible. It's very difficult, but not, not impossible. Thank you, Larissa. If we don't have the culture of joining. O que é muito bonito, mas também volto reclamando que o tempo é muito curto. O que é muito bom também, porque... Which is also good, because that means conversations were very good, that it would be wonderful if we could have more time together. And conversations are one of the most important human abilities and skills, giving us space for democracy, the space for conversations with guests, uh, and a conversation with respect, admiration, and contributions collectively. So I had some contributions also from the Mentimeter, also some contributions from the chat. If you would like to continue to place your comments and contributions on Mentimeter, I'd ask you, uh, Andrea Felipe, to once again present the link um, on the chat so that uh, people can join and participate as well. So you may enter this link and continue to bring in your contributions individually. Uh, but now I'd like to open up to have one, two or three people to place a question or the main question presented in the group. Whatever the group presented, just place a very objective question so we can have some specific questions, maybe about 30 seconds. That's enough to just place your group's question. So here on Zoom, on the bottom part, uh, you can see reactions. And then right next to you, you can see raise hand. So if you could maybe use that, I know we have about 137 people connected. So it's difficult to know who is raising their hand on the screen. So I'd ask you to please mark uh, that you would like to place a question um, using your voice. So then we'll allow you to open up your mic. You can access reactions, raise hand, and then you'll see on the left side, as Felipe just did, uh, where you have the Banca Etica Latinoamericana. While you all think about the question a bit or create the necessary courage to um, open up your mic, uh, Felipe, would you like to talk uh, about something? Or was this just an example? Okay, perfect. Great. Um, he was just explaining how to raise hands. All right. So I have a few questions here that were provided. And I will um, work on this so that the translators can also translate this in simultaneously. So one of the questions that was presented by Mentimeter was if the companies, uh, the internet companies, these big internet companies have so much power, then wouldn't it be uh, interesting to propose or impose that they also have a legal and managerial structure that could be more democratic? So these big private companies that are internet focused uh, would have to maybe risk democracy as well and not be so hierarchical so that's one question another question as well this one is how we could break the apathy and lack of interest in really being active in a democracy how to participate in democracy what are the main causes for the 
capacity to the issue with the uh, intensification of apathy uh, towards this interest in participating actively in politics. What's at the root of this re uh, main issue, even if you do open up room for dialogue and expression? Another question that's also here on Mentimeter is what is the role of social communication and how can it become more fruitful? So waiting if someone wants to also raise their hand and speak through uh, the voice feature. We also have time for that as well. Who else? We have another question from the chat from Rosario Pinheiro. How we could search. Uh, que não se persigam interesses manejados à la sociedade através do medo. Quer dizer, como, como conseguiriam sair do, da submissão e do manejo da sociedade pelo medo? Pergunta difícil, eu acho. Mas eu gostaria de, enquanto uh, você... That's a difficult question, I guess, right? How we could leave um, this structure of society without uh, this manipulation of fear. But now we're going to head back to Hafner, and he'll have some considerations on these questions. We might not be able to cover all of the questions, but they are being collected and saved through our features on the Zoom chat and Mentimeter, so that we can then bring in some of the answers um, through the page of the group that's organizing this process. So Gerald Hafner, please, would you have some initial considerations and comments on the main issues presented? Yes, sure, I do. And first of all, thank you very much for these wonderful uh, contributions. The one that I heard the questions and the other ones that I didn't hear. So thank you for starting this discussion. For me, this is the most important outcome of this meeting that we all, that you start to think and to discuss about this question and that you understand, you know, democracy is not there. And also it's not ready. Democracy is also not a thing. It's not, you know, a dead thing that just lays or stands there. It's a being. And the question is, how do we create social beings like democracy? And it's important to understand that we are all responsible for that. We all contribute to that. And the way we think, the way we speak, the way we act in public does create this and this being or not, does sometimes also more or less destroy or kill it. So if I would come to some of the questions, then I would say, uh, for example, if it's about the, the role of internet and uh, the, the huge power that the multinational companies have that rule the internet, then I would say this is one of the best examples for what we are talking about. Because what happened there? What happened is that the legal sphere, the sphere where it's about rules, about rights life, was hijacked by companies and was made by companies. You know, this is like we would say, okay, Mercedes, BMW, Toyota, you will make the rules for driving cars. No, we don't do that. We say the rules, this is a question for the political sphere, for the society, and then they can build their cars following our rules. If you would leave the rules to the companies, we are lost. And that happened in the internet. And we accept this, you know, constantly when I want to use an app, I have to say, I agree, but it's not true because I don't agree to these strange terms that they set because it's one-sided, it's not an agreement. So the first thing would be to understand that the internet, and I'm not talking about specific applications, I'm talking about the general structure. This is commons. This cannot be private property. So we need to make rules for the internet and then allow these companies to following to these rules uh, make uh, their um, uh, applications or their, their offers, but the rules should be discussed democratically. So for me, this would be the next important uh, goal I would go for in terms of democracy, change the rules and 
make the internet, let's say, a public foundation and not a private owned business. So if I would come to, to other questions, like uh, there was in the chat this question of proxy participation and also technology, how to use technology. And I would link this to the question of apathy. So what can we do with people who just don't care or who don't know what to do? I think it's important to not just make it a discourse, but to make it real and uh, not just to discuss, but also to do things. I give a very simple example. We discussed in Bavaria where I lived uh, for decades, we have made all creeks, all small rivers like this, you know, in a concrete bed where the water flows the direct way from A to B, which makes the soil not um, living anymore, the water dirty, and also uh, which causes the risk of, of high water and, and all the consequences of that. So we said we need to allow the water to meander again, to make bends. And what we did was, with, uh, we, we did a, a citizen initiative on that, and then with the consent of uh, the, the, the lawmaker, we then started to invite people to, on their weekend, to dig, you know, and to change the bed of the river. And this was such a joy with all the people of the city we lived in together do that and change our city, our environment. And so they realized, ah, yes, it's our city. It's not the city of them. It's our city and we can do something. We can change something. So this can be a part of democracy. And the other way around, we need to, let's say, transfer all the issues where people suffer, where people are angry, where people are frustrated. We need to go to them, speak, ask, and say, what's the reason? What can we do? And then find way to transform this into proposals, into initiatives. So to come beyond this frustration or aggression onto a way where it's about solutions. And that, again, is the possible of direct democracy, because this is an instrument where real citizens can engage. And that's the difference to a form of democracy where you just listen and watch to the others. But in the end, it's, you know, it's a huge, let's say, um, suitcase full of instruments. And democr direct democracy is only the last one in this set of instruments, instrument that starts with citizen assemblies, citizen councils, um, maybe even to use the proper instrument where it is needed. I talked about direct democracy because in the end, the question is who has the say? And only if people really realize they have the say, then they realize, okay, I can say something, I can do something. And this has consequences, consequences. Overall, I would say, you know, we are in this situation together in the world, in, in a burning world, and we can't just sit back and watch like in the cinema. We have to stand up, get on the screen and change the script. And this is the only way to do this is democracy. If you don't want to do it just by aggression or by rumor or by whatever, uh, the power of the mighty or of money, then it is about democracy. And therefore, this is the question, how to transform the development of the inner self of the I into our responsibility for society. Thank you for listening to these last remarks. Thank you so much, Gerald. It's always, if we had a whole day to talk to you, we definitely would have many, many comments and discussions and topics to cover. But I think today we've already reached the main objective for this day, which uh, you were so willing to help us with, which is that these people that placed all of these questions here are already putting their, um, getting active, right? They're already, when they place their questions and their comments and opinions, that means they are already desiring to actively work and head towards the direction of what they're writing. So more than just asking you that uh, as someone that has quite a bit of experience and brilliance, 
uh, know-how and your professional experience, but more than just the questions to you, they are asking themselves these questions. And I hope that you guys can move towards really answering your own questions and issues because these generate movement. When we have a question, we have movement to find the answers. So now I am going to head towards the final remarks for our day today. It would be fantastic, of course, if we had more time to talk, but our time is also limited. Um, and so I will thank you once again, Raptor, uh, for your time and dedication and attention and all of your experience also in your life towards uh, humanity, contributing to humanity as a whole. And I will ask Juan to bring in his final remarks for the closing speech and announcements we have to speak about today. Thank you all for your participation. Gracias, Wilson. Buenos días, buen día, good day or afternoon. Thank you, good morning or good afternoon, wherever you are. My name is Juan Botero and I work for the and I also work for the section of, of social sciences. It's a great pleasure to see what we've been able to obtain here with all our responses. And I'm sure that this will bring us to better solutions collectively. Now we're already concluding the, the meeting and I wanted to very um, thank you all. I wanna thank Hefned for all his inspiration and it's something that he, he brings in his own um, being, but he is sharing it with all of us. So Wilson also, thank you so much for all your assistance and help and for everyone that participated here. I also wanna share shortly a few conclusions that I'm taking with me um, in this meeting. So it's, it's, I think it's more important than what political party we, we represent or what we we like or not. So this is what I this is what I believe we're going through. So where do these ideas come from? And I want to also remind you that tomorrow Cicero Blay from Brazil will be talking about democracy and autonomy and our natural resources. So in times where the climate um, crisis is every day closer to us what is we need to define what is our war and what are our solutions so i also want to thank everyone from brazil and from chile argentina um, at 6 p.m in in europe and at nine in, in brazil and, and argentina so a question that i want to just use to to conclude everything here so it says a social life healthy a, social, a healthy social life can only be found when the entire community can see their own reflection and when the entire community can um, live and experience the virtues of all of them. So that's it. Thank you very much.